Welcome back guys to UC Organic. Today is June the 29th and I want to give you guys a, a brief update of the garden um, and all the things that we've got going on and what we've been doing. Um, as in the previous video, as you can see, our grapevines are doing very well. Um, I've done uh, the weeding and as you can see, um, all the weeds are gone. Um, grape vines and the grape clusters are very visible from the leaf pulling. Um, as you can see how beautiful the light is shining down on the grapes. Massive clusters everywhere. Now, once I uh, did the weeding this morning, I sprayed the bottom of the uh, uh, the grapevines with neem oil, uh, and that to combat any uh, black rot that may be laying on the ground, or any grapes that were pulled off and still down there that had black rot on them. So as you can see, um, very, very well, doing very nicely. Um, uh, even down in our newest, you can see that blue tent. So that tells you that the copper fungicide is still on the leaves of the grapes. So um, all in all, uh, I think uh, we're going to uh, have a good harvest and, um, and a healthy, healthy um, grape patch for next year. Bed number four, as you can see, uh, is in full swing. Uh, we've got beans growing everywhere. Uh, we've got uh, watermelon uh, on the trellis. These are um, sugar baby watermelon. They give you a uh, backside view. And as you can see, I've already got it uh, in a sling uh, to help with the weight. Uh, watermelons can get very, very heavy, very heavy. And as you can see, I've got more watermelon that's developing. Um, I can't tell you if they're fertilized yet until I see uh, a growth pattern. Now, this one does not look like it's fertilized. It's very small, um, but I could be wrong. And as you can see, the bees are doing their thing, pollinating, um, helping uh, to get that fruit going. Our cantaloupe um, is climbing the trellis. Uh, we've got cantaloupe over there as well. Um, not as big and large as the watermelon, but uh, we do have baby uh, cantaloupe developing. As you can see, the honeydew is doing the exact same thing, uh, heading up the trellis, dropping lots of flowers, uh, blossoms, and the bees are loving it. The beans um, are definitely on the move, um, filling up the entire trellis, actually uh, almost trying to go to the other trellis, but I'll redirect that so it can keep going all the way down the other side. Uh, we should have a pretty good bean harvest this year. Um, as you can see here, uh, we've got beans. These are the purple pot. Uh, we've got beans growing everywhere. Uh, cucumbers. Uh, the cucumbers are definitely uh, thickening up. And uh, definitely cucumbers are developed. As you can see there. And we have a nice cucumber right there. Um, our drip irrigation uh, went on this morning um, for about 60 minutes so that uh, you know we can have uh, good moisture set up for uh, today throughout this hot sun and you see bed number uh, three uh, okra is definitely large and in charge um, I did a little research as far as should I prune uh, the okra now all I did was uh, just remove any leaves that was closest to the ground. That's all I done. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, right next to that, 
um, we've got um, beets and radishes um, as you can see um, full full production now there are just a few beets but there are pretty much more radishes than beets so we're gonna just um, harvest them both uh, I guess you call that uh, sister planting companion planting bed number two bed number two uh, purple pod peas again um, full production and we also have uh, beets now these beets guys I've harvested beets um, I've eaten beets already roasted them um, garlic butter red pepper flakes and um, I've also harvested leaves several times as well and uh, I saute those in the same uh, recipe uh, very delicious five star um, all we have to do is um, uh, get growing and uh, you can be eating bed number one zucchini squash and peppers now zucchini um, in a previous video I wasn't getting any zucchini um, at all and um, it looks like they are starting to develop zucchini um, maybe it was all of that pruning that I was doing was creating um, a growth issue uh, but since I left it alone it seems to be developing zucchini uh, as far as yellow squash very very prolific uh, these things are growing and developing yellow squash everywhere. Uh, I've got to get in here and harvest uh, the yellow squash. Uh, keep them cut. Our uh, peppers and our eggplant, massively production, Massively producing. As you can see, these are, uh, I think, the chili peppers. And yeah, chili peppers over here. Uh, those things get pretty large. I'm waiting for them to change color. Uh, we've got uh, candy cane peppers are here and here. Never heard of those before. Um, regular peppers. Um, we've got jalapenos here and here. And then these are jumbo jalapeno peppers. So, um, peppers are doing very well. They love the heat, apparently. We've got our eggplant, uh, which is getting uh, very tall, very bushy and tree-like. And now I understand why, because look how large that eggplant is. Guys, that is huge. And it's very, very heavy. Um, I've got more eggplant growing here. Um, I've got eggplant over on this one. Um, and I've got more flowers developing at the top. I've got an eggplant there. I've got one here and there. So, um, we are definitely, uh, um, we're definitely getting production. Um, how long and how large they're supposed to get? I'll have to do some research to find out, uh, to see if that's ready for harvest or not. Our apple tree, um, is doing very well. Uh, apples seem to be very healthy um, this year uh, will probably be the first year that I've gotten uh, a decent apple off of this tree typically the squirrels would uh, jam on these apples and, and eat them all up bite them and so forth but we seem to be doing very well so far so good we'll keep our fingers crossed um, but we got uh, as I said in previous videos, about 20, 22 apples on this tree. The blackberries, um, I finally covered those up today so that um, we can stop the birds from ravishing in them. Um, all this effort putting into it, I have to get some type of uh, harvest from them. And this is the only way to do it, guys. I have to put netting over. The robins, the red birds, the cardinals, oh, they love them. And they've been smashing them, as you can see. Beautiful, beautiful berries all up and down. Even down below. So, uh, now um, we're just waiting for all of the new uh, growth for next year to come up. 
so that uh, we can process that and uh, be ready. These have already been ravished by the birds, so uh, I'm not going to mess with these Osage trying to cover those up. Uh, the birds won one this year. Uh, they won't get any next year, though. Um, I'll cover them early. And as you can see on the far end, um, the ones that the birds were uh, jamming on, I covered those up. And as you can see, because here um, I've got in this middle section, I've got massive amount of blackberries. So um, some for myself, family and friends. Oh, as you can see, um, we've got um, still green berries on the tree. So uh, it looks like uh, production is doing very well. Our plum tree, we didn't get any plums this year. Uh, but as you can see, the plum tree has bounced back from whatever was going on earlier in the year. In the spring, uh, we've got a lot of new growth. Uh, it's getting tall and um, very, very girthy. So... Uh, looking forward to uh, getting plums off of this next year. Uh, we'll pay a little bit more attention to it. Uh, make sure that we catch anything that's going on with it early on. Now, as far as uh, our melons, um, we are jamming like nobody business on the melons. Uh, remember, these are the uh, tiger melon, the rich sweetness melon, and the kajari melon. Um, Rich sweetness, um, as you can see, guys, we've got one here. Um, this one came out, and it just developed right along. So um, after that, uh, we begin to get quite a few uh, about midways up. Uh, we've got some here. Uh, they're all over the place. It's easier to see them from the backside. This is why I love trellising. Um, it gives you a better view of what's going on. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, we've got a melon here. We've got one there. We've got a melon hiding behind that leaf right there. We've got lots of melons that are being developed um, at this particular point. And we've even gotten some that has just been pollinated, um, you know, at the top. Um, we've got one right here that's wide open with a flower. As you can see from the side, that's a baby melon right there. Uh, the bees are definitely on the move doing their thing. Um, now, the Kajari melon is very prolific. Uh, it is jamming. Um, as you can see here, we've got melons here. Uh, we've got melons there. We've got these I call my twins. They're both coming off the same stem, which is very interesting. Uh, we've got melons here. Uh, we've got melons there. Um, they're all over the place. Um, and the bees are doing their thing. As you can see, the bees are definitely pollinating. And they are not stopping. So, um... That leaf pulling definitely works, uh, not just to control disease, but also to allow those bees to get in and do the things that they need to do. So um, it looks like um, we are definitely um, going to have plenty of melons. Uh, we've got melons down here. We've got melons right there. Uh, we've got melons over here as well as right there so we've got melons everywhere so looking very nice and we'll just keep doing what we're doing and um hopefully we'll get a large harvest the tomatoes uh our tomatoes are now above the stake uh i would say about five feet tall uh, because of the heat um they definitely have leaf curl uh curling inward because i keep them watered every day twice a day um, but you can see we've got the teardrop yellow cherry tomato. And I believe that is the Black Prince. 
as you can see, we've got them. They're developing all over the place. Now, uh, our deck watermelon. Our deck watermelon has spread out, as you can see, has sprawled all the way across the steps. And I do believe we have a baby watermelon. Our first one. Which is right there. Bingo. Our first watermelon. So now uh, this pot, I have to keep this thing watered. And as you can see now, this milk jug. This milk jug, I fill that up with water before I go to work. And I leave that in the uh, top of the watermelon pot. And it drips. I have holes in the bottom. And it uh, drips out slowly. I leave the cap on for vacuum. And uh, that allows to keep that thing moist while um, uh, the sun is out throughout the course of the day. Now, uh, this particular tomato right here is... getting large and i can imagine beefsteak i believe that's the name of this one is going to uh start changing color real soon as you can see we've got more teardrop tomatoes uh here um as well as here so all in all we are doing very very well um in the garden uh looking forward to uh continuing to manage and as you can see the pile of uh, grass that i pulled from underneath uh, the grapevines. That was quite a bit. But I like to allow it to get large. It's a lot easier and faster to pull. Um, if I try to pull them when they're small, I'll be there for quite some time. But uh, beautiful canopy uh, from the newest all the way down. Um, looking very healthy. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, keep you apprised when it comes time for harvest. Now, Harvest time is usually around July, the end of July. Um, we'll see how that turns out. And uh, hopefully we've uh, combated the uh, uh, the fungus, black rot, that was uh, giving us a slight of problem. Um, but as I always say, if I can do it, I know you can do it. All you have to do is get started. UC Organic Midsummer Production Backyard Gardening Urban Country St. Louis, Missouri Until next time Happy Gardening